So let's say that you want to become enlightened. How do you become enlightened? Being enlightened means that you understand a few principles of life at a very, very deep level. So how do you learn those principles? You learn those principles by observing life. And it is very similar to uh, what we have in the West, uh, which is empirical science. Right? So we learn by observing. Now, in empirical science, we know that our own minds can be very delusional and can kind of have all these different biases that kind of distort our reality. So in science, we often use different tools. For example, when we want to look at very, very small things, our eyes are not precise enough to see you know, bacteria or cells. So we use a microscope. Now, in the same way, in meditation... You try to observe your own mind. You try to observe your own subjective reality and you try to learn from it. But the same problem also applies to meditation where your mind is also deluded. And your mind, especially in meditation, is very, very unstable. Imagine trying to observe your mind through a microscope, but having this microscope move all around. So it's very, very difficult to actually observe what you're trying to look at when it is moving all the time. And that's because your mind is very, very unstable. You're thinking about the past, you're thinking about the future. It is very rare for your mind to be really, really in, in the present moment, observing the present moment. In meditation, the first step is to actually make sure that your mind is stable enough so you can directly observe reality. This is called the meditation of Samatha, Samatha meditation. Okay, so what is the technique of Samatha? How does it exactly work? Samatha practice basically means that you focus on a conceptual object. Now, conceptual is really, really important. It is the main difference between the other meditation type, which is called Vipassana, which I'm going to discuss in the next video. But in Samatha, you use a concept. So for the beginners who have no experience with meditation, in meditation, you're sitting down and you're trying to focus on a meditation object. This can be many, many different things. But in Samatha meditation, it has to be a concept. So a concept basically means that it's something from your imagination. It is something that you make up. You can focus on the breath. And instead of focusing on the actual sensation of breathing, so the, the feeling of the air, which is more a vipassana practice, in samatha practice, you try to focus on a mental image of the breath. For example, you can see the air going in and out of your nose, but it's not the actual sensation, it's only an image of the air. It's a very, very important distinction. Or, for example, you can focus on a mantra, which they do in a in the transcendental meditation. You try to repeat the same words over and over again. Or in Tibetan Buddhism, they visualize these images of the Buddha they try to visualize in the, those in their mind over and over again so they become very, very stable. The problem is that your mind in the beginning, when you try to do these practices, your mind is going to become very, very distracted. The practice is putting your mind again on this object and then your mind is going to become distracted and then you reapply your concentration, your intention, and you keep doing this over and over again. And it's very similar to going to the gym and doing many reps and training your muscle in the same way you're training your mind. And what you're trying to develop is called continuous concentration. So continuously you're concentrating on this concept of the breath or this concept or this mantra or this image of the Buddha or whatever image you can think of. So I want to do a, a quick experiment. I want you to imagine a pink elephant. Try to imagine a pink elephant right about here. You can have your eyes open or closed, doesn't really matter. Just imagine a pink elephant. How long can you have this image of an elephant stay there? Maybe it's half a second. Maybe it's one second. Well, what you're trying to do in the Samatha practice is you're trying to make this pink elephant, you're trying to make it be there for, let's say, one minute. Just one minute straight, there's going to be a pink elephant. 
or you're trying to make it stay there for five minutes or 30 minutes or one hour. So that's the whole practice. Now, the problem is that this takes a lot of effort. It is tiring to keep reapplying the intention to have the image. If you keep reapplying this effort, if you keep doing it for months, for years, sooner or later, your mind is going to listen to you. And then what will happen is your mind will become very concentrated. As a byproduct of be becoming very concentrated, there's going to become a very sort of calm, pleasant feeling. And the translation of samatha is also calmness. As a natural consequence of feeling pleasant, your mind is bound to become more concentrated. You need to really understand this. So your mind likes to focus on pleasant feelings. What will happen is you, you become very concentrated. So you, you experience a lot of pleasant feelings. And because your mind is going to focus on the pleasant feelings, it's going to become more concentrated. And then because it's more concentrated, it's going to experience more pleasure. So what you have is a positive feedback loop. At this moment where this, con this positive feedback loop starts happening, you get sucked in to the meditation object. So at the time of the Buddha, they only had this type of meditation. And then the, the monks at the time, they would try to stay in these states of jhana, which are these states when you have the positive feedback loop, you can get into eight different states, which in Buddhism are called the jhanas. The monks at the time, they imagined that these they were having a union with God. Anytime they, they left those states, they were kind of back at the beginning. They didn't really have any permanent change in their psyche. And the Buddha, who was very talented in these concentration states, these jhanas, kind of discover that, you know, this is not what I want. I want a permanent solution for my suffering. And this is not a permanent solution. It's only a temporary solution. So the Buddha then decided that he was going to sit down under a tree and meditate and not get up until he found a permanent solution to suffering. And that's when the Buddha became enlightened because he discovered the technique of vipassana. The vipassana technique is when, you know, to get back to the, the science comparison, is you have your microscope, which is very, very stable. It's in one point. And then vipassana is basically the act of looking down the microscope and observing reality and learning from reality. And this eventually led to the enlightenment of the Buddha. I want to end this video with one last point, that there's a real danger in only reading about these techniques and only knowing these techniques but not actually practicing them don't only read about it but also practice it try to imagine an image and try to keep reapplying your focus on this image that being said i'm looking forward to my next video and i see you guys later peace